developer welcome back to our youtube channels my name is andrea i am an instructor here in verify so i have a question for you what would you do if you encounter a bug while writing the code please leave your answer in the comment section below in this video i will give you some tips and tricks to handle the bug okay let's go okay so welcome back right um there's a saying that you are not a developer if you never ever encounter a bug in your life right as a developer right so normally what should you do if you have bug or uh, like what would you do right so in in this sections i will give you some kind of trick and tips to help you to debug and so at the same time i will give you some kind of example to actually show you how i normally do it right so if you see on the screen right now uh, these are the steps i normally do uh, of course i couldn't give you exactly how how should you like fix the bug right because i need to see what kind of bug you have or that any kind of setup you have in your project right but the are should be the step so step one panic right so whenever you have some kind of bug you always ask yourself what was wrong why it doesn't run right why it didn't show me some kind of image right so after that after you're being panicked just take a deep breath and then actually define the issue right so the idea from from the step two is you need to read the arrow right so more of the time you can tell me um it is quite obvious right i can see the the image on the screen or something like that right so why do i even need to read it i would say for you more of the time in, in terminal is gonna show you the arrow by which file at least it's showing to you which file right and it depends on the bug it could also showing to you why right away which line as well right and even it, it, sometimes when you hover to the red line and the line is show you the suggestion as well so always read the arrow in the terminal right to define what is the arrow what is the bug and where is the bug okay so that is the second step really really important but most of the developer will ignore that part right so the next step is after you knew what kind of issue you are having right now that's gonna be the actual state when you will fix the bug right so at this step we could have a separate way and i would tell you right away is console log right it might be the most common one because a lot of people have been using it it has both advantage and disadvantage at the same time but it's quite convenient so that is the reason why a lot of developer was using that so that is the first one console log right and the second one is our best friends stack overflow right so as the developers a lot of people also working on the projects somehow similar to the one you have right now right so it could happen that they had they had encountered exactly the same issue you have right so you could um go to google right stack overflow and for example i was just taking a simple example here like cans uh fetch the data or something like that right just a simple example can fetch data or like if you give more information that's going to be easier for you to search for the answer so for example, can fetch the data from Axio or something like that, right? And you can see it's showing to you the right first one and the example, and you can see the answer right away, right? So by reading the other code, how they actually fix the issue, you can also apply in your code, right? So at this step, I strongly recommend for you just to read and then apply to your example. Try not to just copy paste in the, the, the working part, right? So that's um um <clears throat> there's an idea behind that, right? So for example, this case you already debug it, so you're happy, right? But what what will happen next time you have the same thing, right? You have the same bug, but you don't know how to debug that because this time you only copy it you don't understand so i would really recommend for you to read 
and then go back to your code go back to your project right and then say writing the code as you understand right these are it's just a guideline for you right it's just some kind of hint for you to debug okay so they are the step i will recommend for you to follow so now let's go into some of the example right so the first one um you can see on the screen right now i have a full stack project running right so basically um <clears throat> this project it have both api and the client folder so the api is for the backends and then the clients for the front end right and this project is actually for an e-commerce website where i'm just selling a random a random product and this is a fruit so because it's just an example i'm selling fruit here right so um let's go into the code again let me open this Okay, so inside the API folder right now, we has a lot of file, a lot of folder, right? So let's say, what if it has some kind of bug, some kind of issue, how can you actually debug it, right? So um, one way for me to actually test the, the server, right, by open Postman. If you don't know what is Postman, you can easily go to Google and write Postman. It's actually a tool for you to test the server, right? So it's showing to you when you are defining the method, when you are providing the endpoint, it's going to show to you the response in this part. Okay, so right now I'm gonna try the get method. The I'm send a request to localhost 8000 and then slash products right and i click send okay so the moment i'm click send it's returned for me an array it's returned for me an array of object and inside that i'm gonna have a several product right so there is the first product the image is the image link is quite long right but there is the first one and there is the second one and there is the last one okay so at least like this round is work right so let me check the second one the round the product right so let's say i want to see the product by id right the product by id so i'm just gonna copy the first one the second one here because the link is quite short so i'm pasting it here and then and paste the product id and then click send again okay so now it have some kind of issue right you can tell you can tell right the way it's showing for me arrow right so now i knew that the get product by by id right it doesn't work right so now let's follow step by step right in the api folder in terminal in terminal right i am reading the arrow but this step is run normally it's from the app right it's actually from the server.ts uh the server is running on port 8000 okay so now this part is actually showing to you where is the issue right so the first line product undefined not found okay so now um we need to find where is the issue which file which folder right because we have a lot of file a lot of folder here where's actually the issue come from right so let's continue reading this part right so you can see right away at this file right so it's inside the services a api folder the source folder right the services and slash product okay so let's go there the the source folder the services products right so now i know where's the issue but which line which line right and you can see right away product.ts and you're showing for me the line number 19 right so now here on line number 19 the product and product id not found right so product so the undefined part is actually the product id right so right now the product id is actually undefined so let's go one level up right where do i actually use this function right so actually the controller 
right? The product get product by ID. Online number 63, right? I'm using get product by ID service. Okay, so I knew that I am use the get product by ID service and I pass the product ID, right? But this this line, line number 63, the product ID is undefined. Okay, so now I knew where's the issue, right? Let's let's start, right? Let's start actually fix the bug, right? So if we want to make sure you can on on way console log, um, you can either write like console log or you can write the sort the shortcut is cdl and click enter console log. Um, yes, console log, right? And then writing product ID. I want to see the product ID. Right, so I'm gonna. I'm, uh, normally, you should give it a name. So, when it's showing for you in terminal, you know which data coming from. Right. So now the server is running normally. Right. Let me go to the postman, and I will send it again. Right. Of course, it still gave me the same error because I haven't debugged yet. Right, so in the terminal right now, you can see undefined and product ID. So this is from line number 63. I'm just console log it, right? Okay, so one step, one uh, uh, one layer up, right? Where this product ID is actually from the request dot params, right? Dot ID, right? So basically these this value is undefined okay so now i knew it's not from the product id right i could actually console log let me try the shortcut yes and writing request dot params right and i same idea i'm gonna give it a name so i knew that what is the value in terminal right so in here i'm gonna write params right param save the file and we're gonna send the request one more time right send mm -hmm. saving the gaming for me the same arrow right that is i knew it by now okay so now in terminal i knew that there's two console log right the first one for the product id and the second one for the para okay so i can see the 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 the, <clears throat> the error right away right when i console log request dot para it's actually return for me an object right and inside an object i have the key and the value right the name of the key is product id and the value is a string right it is exactly let me open postman again it's exactly the product id i'm passing in at the end point right okay so now the issue is actually from the id right in the code you are writing is product id but in the code you are writing right now is only id so that is the reason why the variable product id is undefined okay so now when we actually knew what is the issue we can easily write in product id right so now let's try again in postman it's the same same method localhost slash product and then the product id click send right and now everything is work right i am getting that product by id right so let's check again in terminal in terminal right i can see that i can see it right away in the terminal right i can see the product id and i can see the paragraph right okay so there is an say it's just a small it's just a small example for you right but you can always console log something is undefined right and always go level by level right uh, of course it depends on the project you're working on right now right but if you have any kind of issue for example the back end right now going to the app right or the controller the services right um, or the route right normally i would go to the app first because that is the highest level right i have three route 
I go to the product, I go to the product route. The product route here, I have only the methods. On line number 22, I knew this is the route I'm working on right now, right? The product ID services, the product ID controller actually, yes. And now in the product controller, I am using get product by, by ID service, right? So let's go level by level, okay? So that is the example of the backend. Right. So let's say if you have some kind of issue with funnel, right? How could we actually debug, especially for the styling for the CSS, CSS part, right? So let me open, uh, let me close all of these tabs so you can easily see it, right? So right now you can see I have running the funnel in localhost 3000, right? And it's showing for me the list of the product, right? However, however, in the product list, in the product list right now, right, I do have online number 20, the product list, the product list, the title, right, the H1, right, but on the screen right now, I do not see that, I do not see the product list, right, if everything is work, it should showing me product list as a H1, right, as a heading, it's a heading. Right. But right now it doesn't show anything. Right. So when it comes to CSS, when it comes to CSS, right? Always right click and click on inspect. Click on inspect. Right. And if you don't want to do that, you can actually have the second way by writing on the, the setting or the three dot on the right side and go to more tool and the choose the last one, the developer tool. Right, it's also showing for you the same thing, right? But I would actually recommend for you to use inspect because the moment where is your mouse located, it's gonna inspect for you that element as well, right? So you can see before I am click on I the mouse was at the first product, right? So I'm inspect again. It's showing for me where this in the lemon as well right so i can see mango i can see the iref which is for the buttons right and i can see the image right so i can see right away and with the elements in the developer tool you can also see the h1 okay so now it's actually we actually have it right but we just don't see it okay so we do have the h1 but we just don't see it, right? Okay, so on the right side, it's actually showing for you what styling you have been applying, right? And you can see right away, right now, the margin top is minus 50 pixel, right? So that is the issue, right? When it's minus 50 pixel. That is the reason why you can see it. And a cool thing about this tune is you can change it right away, right? So I don't want 50, I want 10, right? In the moment you click enter, you could, you could see the title right away, right? So you could actually test. You don't want, let's say, you don't want it to be, um, let me, write this again you don't want it to be minus 50 let's try minus 40 right minus 40 right you can see right away you can see it you can see the title right or we can actually try minus 50 right away minus 50 the product title right so again on the on the right side on the right side right you can test let me refresh this right on the right side you can test right away the the link right so for example let me try again it to 40 right you can see right away the the, the title the product lead is somehow this this appear right here right so now we knew where's the issue right so actually going to the app.cs where i am applying to the margin top 
here right and let's remove the minus and then now you can see the title right okay so that is also one of the tips for you to to actually see it as well and for the developer tool for a developer tool the console here is also a really useful really useful tool for you right so let me console lock uh, for here let me console lock the product list the product list and at the same idea i'm gonna give it a name products right products because it is a list so it should be plural right and you can see right away in the console it's showing for me what i have been console log right I, I i can easily expand and see okay i'm getting the list of the product i'm just i'm just sending before with the back end right so that is the second part the console right so the next the next part is i want to show you is actually the networking right so if sometime sometime when you were sending request to back end sending request to back end right you can see right away if you have some kind of issue right you can check it in the network part right so the first one is a name the first one is a name right so it is the the local host 8000 slash product right and the moment the moment you click on the products let me click on here so the moment you send the request to product it's gonna showing you if the status is the successful or not right and right now i am using fetch Reduct is actually in Reduct Thang, right? I am using Fetch, so it also showing for me I'm using Fetch instead of Axial, right? And the side, and there is other information, right? And if you want to see the detail, if you want to see the detail, you could actually go and click on the name. So that's gonna give you more information, right? Local host 8000 slash product, the method is get, right? It's 200 means it's successfully, right? And you could also preview, preview what when it's return for you. And there is the response, the some other informations and the timing, how long you actually sending the request, right? So in case there's some kind of like uh, arrow, you can see it's right away. It's not going to be 200, right? It's going to be um, a 403 or 404, depends on the method, right? And the performance, the memory, the applications, all of this is actually, uh, it's not for the debugging. But if you want to, to know about this, these tones uh, if you are like curious just leave your questions in the um in the section below i would be happy to answer you right so again just to wrap up what we have done for today right for debug step one panics step two define the issue actually read the issue line by line which file which folder right and then step three we actually fix the bug right neither by um stack overflow by console log right and you could even ask someone right okay so the last thing i want to actually to, to tell you is if you if you spend really long time on a bug right i would recommend for you to actually go out for a walk right or do something else and then after 15 or 30 minutes go back to the code right because at that time you are not so stressed anymore and you could actually see the issue with a fresh mind you could actually look at the issue a different angle right okay so please from now on if you have some kind of bug uh please at least try this to see if it works and let me know in the um in the comments below okay thank you i will see you next time bye bye